everybody doing? Mike over here at the limo garage again. And today we're dealing with an air conditioning failure that I want to share with you guys. I know a lot of you guys are running the same type of vehicle that we have here, so hopefully this will help you out if you run into the same situation. Um, this is a 2014 Dodge Charger that was stretched in 2015. Uh, it was stretched by Pinnacle Limousine Manufacturing in California. Uh, it's a dual AC compressor system, and it's a V6 engine of 3.6. This is the same engine that you guys are running in your Chrysler 300s. So just because it's the Dodge Charger doesn't mean anything. It's still the same. So if you had a vehicle built by Pinnacle and they did uh, the two compressor setup and you happen to have a rear AC failure, you're going to want to watch this because this may help you out in the future. Um, the guys over at Pinnacle are amazing. This is not their fault. This, this vehicle was stretched three years ago. I have a, a compressor that just took a crap. Not their fault. They're amazing. Um, I was able to get in contact with Frank. Uh, and he actually answered me on a Sunday, and he got me the part number for what I needed so I could fix this on my own. Uh, so kudos to them. They're amazing. So anyways, um, if you guys have a catastrophic failure on your AC compressor for the rear AC on these cars, um, it's not a huge deal to do. You can do this in-house, um, and it doesn't take too long to do. So if you bring the camera right over here, I just want to show you guys what we're looking at. Now, this is the factory AC compressor. I've already removed it. And when you remove the factory AC compressor on these, there's no need to take any of the lines off. Okay, so you do not need to evacuate the Freon. Now on these cars that are, I think it's 2014 and newer, the factory AC does not run on our 134A Freon. It runs on 1234YF, which is a new type of Freon that's very expensive, and it's hard to find anybody who's servicing that system. So if you can do this without taking these lines off, and evacuating the factory system, that's good. So you can see, I've still got my lines hooked up. All I did was take the four bolts out of the compressor and I set it off to the side. Now, quick tip to make it easier to get this compressor out. The bottom bolt that sits, actually when this is back in, it would be this bolt right here. That sits furthest back in the bay. Uh, the only way to get to that bolt, come around here, you actually have to take the wheel off. Take off the wheel. And if you go up right through here with an extension uh, and a socket, you can get that last bolt off. All right, so with, with that being said, once this compressor is out of the way, the second compressor is mounted right underneath it. I've already removed it, but I don't know if you can see down in here. This is where it would be. That's the mounting plate that Pinnacle made for it. Uh, it's a great spot to put it, and it also makes sure that it only runs on one belt, so it's a continuous system. So anyways, I've already removed that. Once this is out of the way, take out the four bolts. That compressor comes out super easy. So now that that's out, I want to show you guys, I want to show you guys how I confirmed that my compressor was the failure problem. Um, we had two problems with this compressor. The front seal blew out on it and we lost all the Freon, and also we lost engagement on the front clutch. So I'm going to show you over here. This is our old compressor, all right? Now, our leak started on the back side back here. I've cleaned most of it off for testing purposes, but all back here was all wet, covered in green. If you see green everywhere, it's not antifreeze. These cars run on um, red or purple antifreeze, depending on what year it is. So this green that you're seeing, this is actually um, oil from the AC compressor. That's the dye that's in the oil. All right, so anyways, I know I have a leak there, so that's that. Now, my other problem is electrical. You've got a two-wire plug here. The best way to confirm that you've got failure here, first you want to check power going to it from the car. That's super easy. Get yourself a power probe. You can get these from AutoZone, Advanced, O'Reilly's, wherever. They're like 90 bucks. This is great because not only can you test for power and ground, you can also put power to something or add ground to it. Makes great for doing bench testing, all right? So the only thing that I want to do here is prove that my circuit is broken that's supposed to make this electric clutch engage. Very simple to test. You've got a two-wire plug sitting in here, all right? So I'm going to take my ground lead. Now watch, when I hit it here, see this lights up ground? So I know I've got a good ground lead. I've actually got this hooked up to the car right now. So anyways, all we're going to do is go in here to these two leads. We're going to put your ground on one, and then we're going to put this on the other. Now, if this clutch is still good and completes the circuit, you should see my little green light come on. See that? Nothing. No green light. So that, that confirms that there's a, a break inside the windings in here for the electrical clutch. Now just to show you that I know what I'm talking about, here's the new compressor. 
We're going to do the exact same test on this. We're going to put our ground lead here. So if we check right here, see that? We got green light. So right there tells me that I've got a complete circuit and we're good to go. All right, so I'm going to put this all back together and then I'm going to go ahead and I'll pick up, um, I'll pick up the camera again once I get it back together and show you guys how to charge this system so that you know how much to put into it and confirm that it's working correctly. And I'll give you a few more updates on tips that you need to know when you're replacing your compressor. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. All right, guys, how you doing? Welcome back to part two. I had a little bit of a problem with my camera the other day. Uh, I didn't have enough memory in it, so it shut off mid-video. So I just want to wrap up real quick some info I wanted to share with you guys about doing the AC compressor on these cars. Um, I did run into a problem when I put that new compressor in when I went to start it for the very first time. I turned it on, and the compressor didn't engage, and smoke started coming out in front of the compressor, out of the clutch. So I shut it off real quick, and I did something that I should have done in the first place. You want to grab that compressor clutch in the front after you've charged your AC system and you want to turn it by hand about, I'd say about seven or eight times. Um, and what that's going to do is that's going to help to circulate a little bit of that oil in the system and free up that clutch from when it was pressed together in the factory. Um, a few of the little key points to remember when you're doing these things, the amount of freon that you put in and the amount of oil you put in is very, very important. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a hold of um, Frank at Pinnacle and he was able to tell me how much Freon is supposed to go in this vehicle, uh, which was about 3.12 pounds and about 11 to 12 ounces of uh, bag oil, AC oil. Um, so that wasn't too big of a deal. There is a process if you are not able to get that information. Um, I've done other videos on that, so I don't want to waste your time going into that. If you guys can't find the video that explains how, how to figure out how much Freon to put into a limo, just hit me up, send me a message, I'll explain it to you, I'll give you a call, whatever's easier. Uh, but anyways, just to recap, second AC compressor on these cars, not too big of a deal to replace. Um, if your vehicle was built by Pinnacle, the second AC compressor, um, they used one out of a 2013 Chrysler 300 uh, with the V6 3.6 liter. You can get that AC compressor anywhere. Um, I was able to get mine in advance. They came with a lifetime parts warranty, so for me, you can't beat it. Um, you can find them cheaper on eBay and order them from the manufacturer, but for me, it just seemed like a smarter idea to buy it from Advanced Auto Parts. They're right across the street. They guarantee lifetime part replacement, so to me, that's worth it right there. Um, <clears throat> if you guys have any other questions about how I replace this or anything that you need to know to help diagnose the problem with your AC, feel free to hit me up anytime. My cell phone number is 386. 237-2998 or just drop, a, drop a, uh, a comment at the bottom of the video. I try to get on top of those as quick as I can and return your comments. You can also check me out on Facebook. Uh, we've got the Mike and Marlo page, uh, Mike and Marlo and Denny. Uh, or you can hit us up at uh, Elegant Limousines and Wedding Services, Daytona Beach. All right, I hope this was some help for you guys. See you next time, Mike at the Limo Garage. Thanks for watching, guys.